So it's, I'm Scott Mears with Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development and we're going to do a little quick video here on on how to set up a birth armyworm trap. Um, it's just to help you understand the pieces and parts and make sure you get everything in the right place and everything works for you. Okay, so when you receive your kit um, in the mail, you should have the following pieces. I'll go through each of them. You should have a, uh, a bottom. It'll have a number on it. Um, you should have the top. It'll also have a number on it. Um, you'll have a lid, so that makes up the cage or the trap proper. Should have a latex glove. Should have a cotter pin. I'll show what that's for later. Um, you should have the cage and a lid for the cage. That's what will hold the pheromone. Um, you should have a little piece of twist tie and a vapona in a in a bag. Um, you should also have a bag that says Bertha Lures on it. Um, and that has the, the lure in it. Um, you should have a supply of wire as well. In addition, you should have a, uh, a, a stand, um, which we'll see in a bit. Um, you may need scissors to open the Vapona strip and a wire cutter to trim the wire when you're working with it. So, okay, so a um, couple tricks with the trap. They're, they're numbered, um, so if you get more than one trap, make sure that the numbers match up. The, uh, the holes in the top and the bottom should line up, so you just snap together as a test fit to see that it lines up. And that's actually where this cotter pin will go uh, later, and that keeps it from wiggling apart. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. The next thing you do is actually snap the lid on. So this lid just, and it takes a little finagling, but you just line it up and snap it on. So. Once this is on, it is very difficult to get off, so that's why we, we don't ship it on because it takes up a lot more room that way. So it snaps down tight all the way around. And there, there you have the assembled trap. Now, the next trick is, if you look on the side of the trap, there are two sets of two holes here and just a little further around there. Now those holes, one set is to tie to the trap, so the set that ties to, or, uh, one set is to tie to the stand, and that lines up with the, with the, uh, the top of the trap. The other set is actually to tie your vapona on. So now that you know that, you open it up, and that's where you'll put your vapona on this set here. Okay. Before we do the vapona, we're actually going to do the. Uh, the birth armyworm lure. We'd prefer it in this order so that we don't get insecticide on the lure and mess up the capability of the lure. So you have a, uh, a latex glove. Um, so you just take this little lure out of the bag, pop it into the cage, and then snap the lid on the cage. And that goes in nice and tight. So just set that aside. And then we open up our Vapona. And we use, this is an insecticide, so we use a, a glove to handle the insecticide. Okay, so now this was the one that we're uh, doing tying to. So the twist tie just goes in side here through those holes. Okay. Just hold it in place with your thumb. They can touch the bottom of the trap and then just pull up the twist tie tight and tie it off. So fairly straightforward. Now we're done handling any anything chemical, so we can take off the glove. Um, we will want to feed our wire through that we're going to tie to the stand with. Oop. Got lots of wire here. Okay. 
and then the trap goes together with the uh, those holes lining up and the pin goes in <laughs> it's nice and tight so there that's all ready to be uh, hung except for we gotta just snap in the the pona or the uh, lure in there so that's that's all ready to be hung okay so now we're gonna show the hanging of the uh, the actual stand or hanging of the trap on the stand now the selection of the site is fairly important um, we want to, this the site we're using here is just uh, on the side of the JG O'Donohue building so we didn't have a good field to work in but this can be hung right in the headland not it does not have to be right in the field it can be just in the headland um, we want to avoid any major depressions uh, we want to avoid any uh, big groves of trees if we can um, if possible north or west side of the of a canola field but that's not entirely critical uh, the big thing is this is a pheromone baited trap and we want to have the airflow in and around the trap as uninterrupted as possible so no trees no big valleys no huge ditch uh, if if we can avoid them so that's the general selection criteria now the trap as we had assembled before we threaded a little wire through these top tabs and you'll notice on the trap stand itself that we have two holes that line up with those tabs on the top of the trap. Okay, so we just slide the wire through there um, and we want to pull this up as tight as we can to the stand itself and then just twist the wires off to, to finish it out. So that's the top and then remember we put this wire through uh, when we're assembling we just take that wire and we just twist that off here as well um, and that just keeps the trap from wiggling in the in the wind um, Alberta does get a fair share of wind and we found that these little tabs wear out if it wiggles all summer so that's just to stop it from from uh, wiggling in the wind now um, when you're counting all you have to do is pull this pin out easy easier said than done it's a tight fit so pull that out and then unsnap it and then you can actually just um, dump the the moths inside into a bag and count them later or you can just count them out of the trap right there in the field just one two three four five if there's only a few and you just throw them on the ground when you're done so um, that's that's very simple to count and then to finish up you just snap it back together put the pin in and uh, then of course just put your uh, data into the uh, website so and that's that's how it's all done